We've got a live one, people. We've got a live one. It's an 812, 812 super fast. Hold on. Yes, 812 super fast. Lovely. <laughs> Glass, welcome to Goodwood Motor Circuit. I'm here for the Duke of London Track Day. Uh, Merlin, the Duke of London, organises these events well, every now and again. They always look epic, so I wanted to make sure I got down to the next one. What's even more epic about today is the car Merlin's lent me. This is a BMW 530 MLE, and whilst you may never have heard of it, it is essentially the first ever BMW M car. You could also look at it as the original M5. So, a quick history lesson to try and explain the importance of that car. Uh, back in the mid-1970s, BMW South Africa wanted to go racing in a series called the Modified Production Series. So, they called up the newly founded BMW M department, the motorsport division, which was being headed up by a guy called Jochen Neerpash, and they explained that they thought if they took a couple of E12 525s, they could make some pretty good race cars. Jochen agreed and greenlit the project. Now, to participate in the modified production series, manufacturers had to make a hundred homologated road cars. So yes, that's not only essentially the first ever M car, it's also a homologation special. Admittedly, this wasn't the very first time that BMW M had worked on a homologation road car. There was, of course, the iconic 3-litre CSL, but that was far more extreme. A real study into lightweight and something that was actually born for competition from companies like Alpina and Schnitzer for BMW, which Nearpash then improved. However, the 530 MLE, like you see right in front of me, basically gave us the blueprint for all future BMW M models. Uh, like I said, started their lives as 525 chassis, but they then got this reworked, super hot 3 litre M30 BMW engine, which we had seen in other BMWs, but it was reworked to get close to 200 horsepower. A suspension, that was also reworked. Bilstein shocks and stiffer springs made the handling a whole lot better. You, you also get these kind of flared wheel arches, which I love, as well as the motorsport decals. Then round the back, you get this additional kind of rear spoiler, which just gives that kind of air of aggression. Now, just like with more modern M cars, the interior got some changes as well. All MLEs have this stunning blue interior, including these amazing velour sports seats. I'm obsessed. Uh, all that power from that uprated 3-litre engine went through a 5-speed dogleg gearbox with this lovely wooden gear knob. Uh, you then also got a slightly different steering wheel, just making the interior feel more special. For me, though, one of the coolest parts about this car is what you don't see, obviously, and it's the weight saving. Because of course, all M cars have to be a little bit lighter than their donors. And check this out. BMW South Africa would take the 525 chassis and drill holes in it to reduce the weight. How outrageous is this? And because this was done by hand, no 530 MLE is the same because the, well, the holes are all in different places. But yeah, it's just whatever they could do to reduce the weight. I mean, this car weighed just under 1,300 kilos. And with 200 horsepower and all those other changes means it's an awesome driver's car. As you can imagine, given this car's importance, it is now incredibly valuable. It's actually currently for sale with Merlin at Duke of London. But quite unbelievably, today, he's gonna let me take it for a few laps around the Goodwood motor circuit. I did ask him about six times if he was sure, but he said, look, this car is a homologation special. It was born for the track. And back in the mid 70s, Goodwood would have been its kind of hunting ground if it was around in the UK. 
So yeah, before I leave and go do some other things, which I'll fill you in on later, we're going to be taking this icon, this BMW icon, out on circuit. Okay, boys and girls, here we go. Goodwin Motor Circuit in the 530 MLE. I've got one lap. It's gonna be a good one, I'm sure. Now, the reason you might never have heard of this car is because it's a South African market special. Because they were entering this into the South African Modified Production Series, they only need to make homologated road cars available in South Africa. You can trace so many of the elements that they apply to this car to a brand new M5. So whilst maybe it's not officially in that lineage, if you're a BMW enthusiast, you'll know about this thing. You'll know how important it is. And out here around Goodwood, it's glorious. Honestly, it feels so tight. You think, oh, it's only got 200 horsepower. It feels plenty. The rear end's a little snappy, so I'm having to pay attention, I'll be honest. Thank God the sun has come out because it was a wet morning and I was a little terrified as to what it would be like out here on a slippery surface. But yeah, what an amazing experience. Huge thanks to Merlin and the previous owner of this vehicle for trusting him and trusting me to have a go. Ah, oh, 50 years old this car and it's still making me sweat. What a glorious thing. Only problem with a lightweight homologation special, no air conditioning. And I'm still cooling off from that relatively tame on-track experience. Uh, anyways, you can probably tell, I've now left Goodwood Motor Circuit and I'm on the road. Because whilst this car was born on track, it was made for the road and I want to experience it out here. Uh, but also, I've had a very cool invite from a friend of mine uh, who's a property developer. And apparently he's just finished an amazing property in northwest London. And unlike pretty much every other property in London, apparently it has space for four cars to park in the garage. The perfect kind of place to tuck away a beautiful classic like this. So yes, I get to enjoy the roads back to London, and then we get to go and check out an amazing property. This is a very, very good day. appreciation this car. First thing the Goodwood paddock, the petrol station a second ago, now I'm on the motorway, people keep looking over and giving a thumbs up or waving. This is an iconically shaped BMW, it reminds people I guess of their childhood or even a better time for cars. This is one of the reasons why I love driving a classic. I think recently I banged on a lot about modern classics, cars from the late 90s and early noughties. I love all those cars, but I do also love proper classics, cars from the 50s, 60s or even the 70s. It's a completely different driving experience. I mean, 200 horsepower these days is nothing. Most hot hatches have double that. But it doesn't really matter. It's not about noughts and 60 times. It's about the experience, and it's kind of more of a rewarding one. Everything is more communicative. The throttle pedal, the brakes, the steering, even the gear changes, they're really notchy and mechanical. You sort of oh, force it into gear. You can't be light-footed about anything. You've kind of got to commit. You know, and I'm taking things pretty easy because this car is for sale. You know, I'm doing a bad job of rev matching. I'm not heel and towing. I'm still having a great time and really enjoying it. Traffic's been bad, but it doesn't matter. I, here I am on the M25, one of the UK's most boring and worst motorways, and I'm just loving life. I feel like I've transitioned to a different era. I can smell things, I can feel things. You can hear there's some creaks and some rattles, but that's part of the charm. That would have developed at some point in this car's history. 66 or 1,000 miles on the clock. Who knows where this car's been, what it's done. At some point, the previous owner would have gone, oh, that's annoying, but it's just part of this car's story now. 
That's what I love, it's all stories. So yeah, it's been great. Anyway, we are now 40 minutes uh, from this apartment, so I'm gonna continue to, I guess, give thumbs up back to people and wave at them and let them enjoy this car as much as I am. I just want to quickly remind you about NordVPN because with the amount I'm moving around at the moment, I'm endlessly logging on to random public Wi-Fi networks. When I do that, I never know who might be looking at or even trying to steal my information. So I always have a VPN active on all of my devices and I've been using NordVPN for like six or seven years. Uh, amazingly, they now sponsor this channel and offer you an amazing deal if you use my link, nordvpn.com forward slash STG. If you don't know what a virtual private network is, keeps all of your information, your data safe and secure when you go online. When you join a public Wi-Fi network in a cafe, a hotel, a restaurant, a motor circuit, a dealership, wherever you might be, you never know who might be looking at what you're doing online. So by having a VPN in place creates a barrier keeping your information safe. Uh, over and above that, they also allow you to keep up with your favorite sports. We're about to head into the final few races of the 2022 F1 season, and I've got a lot of traveling ahead. So I'm gonna be using NordVPN to set my location to the UK so I can keep up with all the races via Sky Sports F1 or the F1 TV app. So yes, I highly recommend you get a VPN in place, and in my opinion, NordVPN is the best in the business. Use my link, nordvpn.com forward slash STG to get a fantastic deal. Well then, I've now made it to The Brick where I'm gonna be checking out this incredible apartment. Before I do that though, kinda of wanna wrap up the story on this car. Because whilst it's not an official M car, not only does it have a great history and importance in this sort of BMW M story, it's also exceptionally rare. I mentioned 100 cars needed to be made for that racing series. Well, 105 or 110 530 MLEs were made in total, 10 years before the first ever M5 of which over 2,000 were made. So, you know, the, the first M5 had about 90 horsepower, more than this, a slightly bigger engine and a few other tweaks. But considering this, as I say, was the mid 70s, super duper impressive. So I've been a big fan of this thing. Now I did say that this apartment we're about to check out had the space for four cars in the garage. And you might be looking behind me going, well, how would you fit four cars in there? Firstly, you'd park better. I'm famously a really bad parker. But yes, of course, you can fit two cars in that space quite easily. However, this garage has a bit of a party trick. Because look at this. These lifts, this racking system, raises up, revealing two more spaces below. So let's pretend I had parked slightly better. <laughs> or if I was an owner of a 530 MLE, and maybe I was only going to use it on a sunny day for a quick drive down to Goodwood and back, I could store it down here on these lower racks, lower the racks down, and then just have my dailies on top. It would, it's kind of like the ultimate storage solution, but it's also space for four cars in central London. I, I need this in my life. I don't have the ability to do this where I live, but I absolutely love it. And also, I mean, there's plenty of big cars down here, but I saw a Defender up here earlier, so you can really stack some proper big cars. But I just like it from the point of view of, yeah, tucking away classics. Imagine having the 360, 530 MLE, lowering it down, F-Type, X3. I mean, <gasps> dream garage, right? Right there done and dusted anyway enough freaking out about car parking spaces let's go check out this apartment I've lived in London my whole life and one thing that still blows me away is when I get up high above the city, we don't have that many tall buildings in London, I mean, at least in the residential areas. So when I go on a sort of high floor and, and look down at the place I've lived my entire life, it's just it's my jaw drops. And this is a penthouse apartment, I didn't actually realise. Apparently it's one of the tallest buildings in the area, which means the views are awesome. Got like 360 panorama views 
over, as I said, sort of northwest London. We're just above Notting Hill, uh, Westfield Shopping Centre is just over there. It sort of depends on how well you know your London geography. But it's a really cool, desirable area, but it's just outside like the super expensive areas. So apparently, this actually is a bit of a bargain. I'm not in the market for an apartment like this, so I didn't even want to ask. Um, but yeah, it's, it's amazing up here. I guess let's kick things off here with this massive open plan area. The dining table, this huge sofa, the floating fireplace, kitchen is just over there. We'll come back to that in a second because while well, I just keep getting distracted by these views. I feel like I could do some good car spotting out these windows down to the roads out there. But anyway, as I say, I'm getting distracted. Back to the tour. I love this floating fireplace. I kind of want to turn it on. It's a bit of a miserable day now. But anyway, let's show you that kitchen because I did mention it. It's a super modern, quite compact kitchen. Somewhere though I would love to make a coffee and some eggs. Actually, I just, I really actually quite need a coffee. Uh, but let me show you out here because it leads on to this quite incredible terrace. I guess that's a good breakfast spot, somewhere that you could then drink your coffee when it's, when it's not raining. It, it has started raining pretty heavily, but you wouldn't know because we're sheltered here on this terrace. Oh, that's, that's moody, isn't it? <laughs> I say you wouldn't know. You definitely know it's raining looking that way. But up until the rain started, I really wanted to come and hang out on this so far, I think maybe I'm not going to do that anymore, but what a huge service. It's outrageous to have this uh, coming back inside to the relative warmth and dry. Uh, we'll continue actually back through the kind of entrance way. This is your front door just here. So this is the hallway. You can see I've put my hat down uh, and straight off the hallway is kind of your smallest bedroom, I guess. The third bedroom. And guess from all the bedrooms have en suites uh, with them, lovely artwork as well, and epic views, again, when it's not raining. <laughs> we continue past more great artwork. I think, there's a I think this is a little, oh yeah, like a little wash closet, bathroom, powder room, I think they call it. I need to brush up on my uh, property terms when I'm doing these tours. I really like all of these art pieces. Uh, coming into this, it's a kind of big spare room. Work from home? Yes, please. <laughs> Imagine sitting here. I wouldn't get anything done. I'd just be endlessly looking out the window. Can we actually spot any cool cars right now? I'm not sure there's anything that special out there. Sometimes you get some cool cars going on the uh, fly over there, but mm, no, nothing. Nothing catching my eye right now. But that's the thing. I could just sit here for days staring out there. Uh, but this is obviously is a bedroom, nice and light, big old windows, lovely more art pieces, and then a bit of a bigger ensuite with a bath in there. We move on finally to the master bedroom. And this is cool because you get your own private terrace. So not only can you uh, lay in bed and look out your windows, actually there's a big old mirror here at the moment. Uh, yeah, look out on these views. You could also go out to your balcony. And, and shout to people or do more car spotting. <gasps> Look at this, even better views. I didn't realize that. Still nothing to talk about right now, but patience, people. The biggest part of car spotting is patience. You could also watch a local basketball game, clearly. So, uh, yeah, lots to, lots to distract you on uh, or with. Uh, and then finally, actually, past kind of a uh, wardrobe closet, I guess. Uh, makeup table. Uh, you come to the master bathroom. Now, I love this. It kind of reminds me of like a London townhousey vibe. Big old bathtub. Something you should know about me. I love a bath. Um, crazy wallpaper, which I'm actually a really big fan of. And then, yeah, the dual sinks. I think you've got a shower just around here. Uh, yeah, that's a shower. And then I guess toilet through there. Got another window. Might want a blind on that one. Don't know. <laughs> Depends if you're a bit of an exhibitionist, uh, whatever you're into. Um, but yeah, this place is just so cool. We've got a live one, people. We've got a live one. It's an 812, 812 super fast. Hold on. Yes, 812 super fast. Lovely. I told you this place was pretty special and as predicted I'm now depressed that I don't live here and I don't have a 530 MLE downstairs on one of those racks. I need to work harder. I need to make more videos, don't I? Uh, anyway, what an amazing opportunity. If you want to find out more about this place, I'll put the link below. If you're interested in buying it, please uh, invite me around once you move in. Mm -hmm.